Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, uh, we're going to continue with our lesson. We have Jeffrey Rochelle from Wurskel Rustenberg, and we have our other two students, Leila Britz and Madli Kutsia, who are also from Wurskel Rustenberg. And I almost forgot to introduce myself. Um, I'm Romofile Dube. Hello, Dube. Hello, guys. Okay, let's immediately start. Let me share the screen with you quickly. Okay, people today we are going to do essay revision and tips. It's obviously very important because um, your essay counts as much as all of your orals put together. That is by far the um, aspect that weighs the most out of all your exams put together. Okay, so um, we are going to revise it. I know that you wrote your essays already in the first term, but according to the annual teaching plan, we have to um, revise essay writing again. Okay, so general. Most importantly, guys, clean up your handwriting. At the end of the year, when the person marking your essay gets something that looks like the dog barfed it up, they are going to feel very negative towards you and already, whether it's fair or not, you're going to get a bad mark. Okay, because if you have to spend half an hour deciphering one essay, that person will already have made the marker very negative. Okay, um, let me just put the slideshow on so that you don't see the whole screen. Good. Okay, so... Then just some general feedback as well. Stick to the word count. We actually count the words when we see that it's much too short or too long. Okay. And then what happens is we don't write, read up to your conclusion and you will definitely lose marks for structure. Cross out your planning. People, I can't tell you how many times it has happened that I have actually started to mark a rough draft and then halfway through realize, but oh, this is a rough draft and then have to start all over again. Okay, so just be considerate towards the person marking it. Then something that you may not know is that there's both a memo and a rubric. Um, the memo tells you how the topic may be interpreted. The many different ways. Is it um, a descriptive essay, narrative, motivational, argumentative, discursive, um, philosophical? What type of essay you are actually going to be marking for this topic? Um, and some topics lend themselves to many different types. Hey, Then the rubric is the scale according to which we give you marks. Um, you can have a look on the internet. Uh, um, you can Google caps, rubric, essay, and you can have a look at the essay um, and where your marks have to fit in with the descriptors to get your best possible mark. Okay, now the most important thing. We already had a little bit of a discussion with this if you um, had a look at the how to write a speech presentation. The first step is to pick a topic. Now, in order to do this, you must know your strong and your weak points. Do not try and write this wonderful narrative essay that tells a fantastic story if you are not the creative type. If you are more a left brain person um, and you like math and science and that sort of thing, pick an argumentative essay because there's a recipe according to which you can write it. Um, and you just have to follow that recipe, okay? If you are the creative type, please write a descriptive or a narrative essay. That will go fantastically then. Decide before the time on the type of essay you excel in. Study the requirements of this type of essay, okay? You must know what is a narrative essay. It's what, what, let me ask you, Dube, what is a narrative essay? Narrative essay is basically when you narrate the story, you're basically telling the story without being in it. You're uh, basically telling it from a third person perspective. Okay, well, or a first person perspective. It's a narrative essay is a narration. It tells a story. Okay, and you will also add some elements of description in there 
because just telling a story will be very boring. Hey, if I had to tell Little Red Riding Hood, for example, one day there was a girl, she went to her grandmother, her grandmother was swallowed by a wolf, the, um, a woodcutter came and split the wolf open, the grandmother came out. That's the whole story. You have to add some elements of description to make it interesting. Hey, Argumentative, you have to sometimes add some elements of narrative, tell a story. Does money buy happiness, for example? Then you have to add some examples which will be descriptive or narrative in nature. Okay. Um, pick a topic that suits the type of essay you are able to write. You may study the requirements of many types of essays and look for the topic that inspires you. Okay, people, if you are an excellent writer and you have always received excellent marks, then please just go on the day and see which is which topic inspires you if not prepare beforehand on what type of essay you are going to write okay and then look for the topic that suits it then i want to talk to you about the topic versus the subject the topic is given to you by the examiner you are given a choice of eight topics which include two picture topics very underutilized okay we'll have a discussion about that just now some of these topics are open-ended and can be interpreted in many ways the subject you write about relates to how you interpret the topic if i give you the topic for example 2019 which was in the exam last year there are many ways. You can write about the events of 2019. You can write a narrative essay telling the story of your matric year in 2019 or your grade 11 year. You can write a futuristic essay as though you are in 1919 and what you think 2019 would be like. You can write a philosophical essay. In 2019, is it still acceptable um, for people to be racist or homophobic or whatever so there are many ways in which you can turn your topic into an appropriate subject the subject you choose will be something you have experienced have knowledge about or have a strong opinion on okay um Layla, what do you love what are your hobbies Ma'am, I like outdoor activities and going out with my friends and I like um, just being busy, not sitting at home and doing something that I can improve myself on. So anything I find um, that drains actually my energy so that I can become better. Okay, so you are passionate about self-improvement, for example. So a good idea would be to write a motivational essay about, or an informational essay on ways that you can improve yourself about self-improvement and the importance of that. Hey, okay. So remember that many learners will choose the same topic as you, but your interpretation will set you apart. Okay. The best advice regarding writing, write what you know. If you love soccer, write about soccer but write in such a way that your language sets you apart okay people if you love your little brother for example more than anything in the world write about him please do but just write about him in a beautiful way make your language pretty another thing that you have to consider is your target audience consider who will be marking your essay the marker marks an average of 90 essays a day. Your essay has to stand out. Um, see the checklist attached on how to do this. We'll get to that later, how to edit. Don't try too hard. Don't be weird or artistic or funny if you are not. Don't be overly moralistic or disrespectful towards any religion. Now, does that mean you cannot write about your religion in a passionate way? No, it doesn't. Hey. You may write about your religion, but don't say my religion is the best. All other religions are stupid. OK, don't be disrespectful. Clear and simple writing is the best. Writing from your own experience on a subject you are passionate about will ensure good marks. OK, it's basically the same as write what you know. People obviously don't write anything racist or sexist or demeaning or gross. 
Okay, don't write something that is very sexual. Obviously, um, me as your teacher does not want to imagine you in such a setting. It will upset me. So, so do not write something like that. Okay. Now, this is the most important slide of all of them, I think. The open-ended topics are the ones that can be interpreted in any way. Okay. For example, in 2016, there was this topic, as I sit here. Now, most of the learners wrote this essay about sitting there in their exam and either thinking back on their school years or thinking about their future, which is great. You may do that, but there are so many other ways to interpret this topic. You can say, for example, as I sit here, I think about my horse, and then you write a descriptive essay about your horse. Or as I sit here, I think about pollution and how it's going to affect the world. So you can write a whole essay about pollution um, and a topic that you are passionate about. You can wield the subject or the topic into a subject that suits you and what you want to write about. As I sit here, I think about um, the world and our need to be more kind to one another. Philosophical essay about kindness. Okay. However, uh, most learners will interpret the topic literally. In other words, write a reflective essay about sitting in the exam room and taking their last high school exam, which includes a reflection about either their past or their future. Okay, we said that. However, the topic may be interpreted more creatively. You can say, as I sit here, I'm watching children playing on the beach. As I sit here, I'm thinking about love. In the 2019 paper, they were all, uh, there's always open-ended topics. The topic 2019, for example, or what an ending, or what a day it has been. You can write anything for such a topic. Okay, so don't be limited by what you think we want to hear. You can um, write a descriptive essay where you describe a scene of a vantage point of as I sit here. You can use this topic to write literally any, any essay. Okay, so don't be limited by the topic. Some are open-ended. Who usually writes an argumentative essay? Does any one of you write an argumentative essay usually? Do you know how to write an argumentative essay where you prove a point? Dube, you're a public speaker, so you must know how to write one. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sometimes I write one depending on the topic that is given. Yes. And how do you go about writing an argumentative essay? What steps do you follow? So the first step that I usually take is um, taking my main uh, argumentative points. Uh, I write them down and then later I uh, start to basically uh, write the body of my argumentative essay and then yes. I later come to the introduction and the conclusion. Perfect, yes. Exactly the way that you would write a speech which is covered in the um, first lesson for this series. You can also apply all of those tricks and tips to an argumentative topic. The only thing that you um, have to remember is when a topic is given to you like, for example, whatever the mind can conceive and believe the mind can achieve, you can't just focus on what the mind can conceive and believe. You have to get to the second part as well. Once in an exam, there was this topic that a stable family is the basis of a stable society. And many people just wrote about happy and stable families. They didn't get to the part about societies. Okay, so that is something that you need to take a look at is to remember to actually um, write about both parts of an argumentative topic. Can you both agree and disagree with the statement given? Yes then it is called a discursive essay, okay? When you give arguments for both sides, it's called a discursive essay and you are allowed to do so, okay? Then, one of the most underutilized topics um, 
is the picture topic. OK, last year they gave a picture of a teddy bear holding a heart. Now, Marley, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you think of a little picture of a teddy bear holding a heart? Well, the heart immediately leads me to love. So, and the teddy bear links to small children. So, small children's love. Yes, we immediately think about other small children and love and how that can be interpreted. Or we think about Valentine's Day, giving your loved one um, a teddy bear holding a heart. But there are many ways to interpret a topic like that. You don't have to write about literally teddy bears and hearts. You can relate your topic to children and the need to protect children in society. Our laws should be more strict so that we can protect our children. You can write about um, sweatshops producing teddy bears and how that is wrong and we shouldn't buy um, stuff toys made in sweatshops. We should buy locally produced or whatever. You can write about love. Um, you can write about how love fits into your life, not just romantic love, but the love of your parents and whatever. It must just be used as a stimulus, as a link um, to what you are going to write about. Now, the other picture was actually um, this paintbrush that was painting a road, um, the scene of a paintbrush painting a road. Now, what does that remind you of, Layla? Are you there? Um, sorry, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. The scene of a paintbrush painting a road. Ma'am, I think it is um, how you, as an artist, that um, indicates you. You have the control of how your future looks and you determine the pavement you set towards your future and what it holds for you and what you do now to um, affect what is going to happen. Yes, definitely. The road can be symbolic of life, your road in life. Eh? And you can write anything with a, any sort of subject. You can make fit to a topic like that. OK, a picture like that is very open ended. You can even write about art because there's a paintbrush. You can write about road maintenance. Interpret the topic literally. You can write about um, how you always have choices in life, how roads are symbolic of choices. You can even write a narrative essay, a story about a kidnapping that took place by a road. OK, just link it in some way. There must be a little hook that links your um, essay to the topic. OK. And very few people actually use the picture topics, so they are a good idea because they are underutilized. Then the language in your essays. Language is important because it counts almost as much as content. The content counts 30 and the language counts 20. But besides being assessed on your language, the language actually elevates your content. Very few of us have the philosophical minds of Socrates or Confucius or whatever. So it's very difficult to make Every single idea in your essay stand out and be at the level of, wow, this thought really takes my breath away. But you can use your language as a little trick to make it seem that your ordinary ideas that many other people have had as well seem extraordinary. If I say, for example, um, it's a good idea to wash your hair. It seems like a very ordinary idea, hey? But if I say it in fancy language, <coughs> sorry, like for example, hygiene is very important. The fact that a person has not washed his hair may signify depression or poverty or whatever. That elevates that idea into another bracket. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or if I say, for example, we all need love in our lives. <coughs> that is not exactly a revolutionary idea. Many people have thought that before. But if I say our lives are empty and meaningless without the warm embrace of love, 
I'm saying exactly the same thing. I'm just saying it in such a way that it sounds more profound. It sounds more clever. So that is what I mean by your language must elevate your content. Now, the first rule for effective language is to keep your sentences short. Long rambling sentences. I'm talking about these sentences that are a paragraph or more. Um, they are not effective. People, <coughs> if you get to your second or third adjective, then you know your sentence has been too long. One idea, one sentence. Language is perfected by editing. The purpose of writing a rough draft is to assess your work and edit to eliminate mistakes and enhance language. Now, how do you go about editing? You will say to me that if I didn't know how to spell a word in the first place, how am I going to correct it during editing? Hey, but editing is more than just correcting spelling. Make sure that you use different types of sentences. Um, Dube, can you tell me what different types of sentences you can think of? Um, ma'am, uh, different types of I, I guess you can say uh, you can basically use ones that uh, make a statement or one that are uh, that are um, that use exclamation marks, basically that are uh emphasizes what the what you're trying to say in that sentence demanding or something yes yes oh. the different punctuation marks illustrate uh, shown here illustrate different types of sentences in one of your sentences in a full st um in an exclamation mark use a rhetorical question use direct words every now and again once or at best twice in your essay you can use an ellipsis a dot 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 um, to show that the thought must still be completed. OK, don't just end all your sentences in full stops. Then check your spelling, your tense and your concord. That is obvious. People, obviously, you have to spell the words right, right in the past tense, because when you write in the present um, and you have to refer back to something in the past, it just becomes a whole big mess. So the best kind of writing happens in the past tense, also the easiest. Check your concord. In other words, check that you don't say I is here or um, she do this. Check that your concord actually works. Then figures of speech. People, when you go back and assess your rough draft, make sure that you added some metaphors, similes and personification. You don't have to go and learn them off by heart beforehand. You can say, instead of saying someone is dirty, you can say someone was as dirty as a trash can. Instead of um, saying the sun was shining, you can say the sun was smiling from the sky. OK, so it's easy enough to change your sentence into a figure of speech and make it more effective. Another very effective device is using an extended metaphor, comparing everything from one thing to every aspect from another thing. Saying, for example, your life is like a journey. You are the captain of the ship. Your friends are the um, crew aboard your ship, making your journey either successful or unsuccessful. Your parents are the steering wheel and um, how that is wielded will determine how your life's journey will go. Um, <clears throat> your religion is the wind beneath the sails of your ship. Compare many aspects of one thing to many aspects of another thing. That is very effective when writing essays. Now, sound devices we already discussed. Alliteration, assonance, onomatopoeia, sibilance. Instead of saying um, <clears throat> the large bear, it's more effective saying the big bear, even though large is a better word than big, but because you can alliterate those words, it's more effective. Strong verbs. Instead of saying, for example, um, she ran down the path or walked down the path. Marley, what other word can you use there? She strolled down the path? Yes. 
Exactly. Yeah. That's a stronger verb than walked. Strolled, galloped, pranced. Use strong verbs and good adjectives. In so, instead of saying, Marley, for example, I am feeling good, what can you say? I feel exhilarated. I feel exhilarated. I feel excellent. I feel superb. Use better verbs and better adjectives. And then the last one is very important. Show, don't tell. Instead of saying, I was hungry, you say, my stomach was growling. Instead of saying, um, <clears throat> I was angry, you say, I felt rage boiling in my stomach. That is what I mean by show, don't tell. Now, if we have a look at the, where is the last slide now? It's lost. Oh, shucks, my computer's freezing. It won't move. Okay, let me just try sharing it again. There we go. Okay, I want you to have a quick look at the difference between these two um, paragraphs. The first one, <clears throat> Tracy was sitting in class and felt hungry. Man, she must we can't see the slides. You can't see the slides. Oh, shucks. No. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, can you see it now? Good. Okay. Instead of saying, Tracy was sitting in class and felt hungry. She asked the teacher if she could go to the tuck shop. The teacher said no, and that Tracy is always trying to leave class. Tracy was very sad and phoned her mom. Now, the first thing I want you to note there is how she jumps between tenses, okay? Tracy was sitting and felt. Instead of Tracy sat and felt, or Tracy was sitting and was feeling. And now suddenly she's saying Tracy is always trying to leave class, whereas... Um, we are in the past tense. The teacher said no and that Tracy was always trying to leave class. Okay, so that's the first error. Then let's try and make it better. Tracy was sitting in class and felt hungry. How can we say Tracy was sitting in class better? My example was Tracy was staring out the wide window. Do you see the alliteration? Trying to focus on what her math teacher was droning on about. Do you see the onomatopoeia there at droning? Okay. She suddenly heard his stomach growl and realized that she was ravenous. So showing instead of telling with stomach growl and realized that she was ravenous. Strong um, adjective instead of just hungry. Okay. Let's have a look at the second sentence. The teacher said no and that Tracy is always trying to leave class. Now we are going to use a different type of sentence. She shot up her hand and asked Miss Nell if she could visit the tuck shop. Miss Nell exclaimed, no Tracy, you are always trying to escape my class. Do you see the direct words there? And the stronger verb of escape instead of leave. Tracy felt hot tears stinging in her eyes. Showing instead of telling, she immediately grabbed her phone and dialed her mom's number. Ellipses. So people, do you see how using the simple tricks for editing has changed a very bland and boring paragraph into a much more descriptive and acceptable one? Okay, I'm going to ask you quickly, Marley, <clears throat> if I give you the sentence, for example, um, I felt very sad. How would you change that into a better sentence using the tricks that we just learned? I would say that um, tears were about to push through my eyes mm -hmm. and I felt the warmth of them behind my lids. Um, yeah. Okay, excellent. You, so you get the idea. Okay, guys, our time is up. Thank you for this lesson. Have a nice day.